would brow in all my plans I'm coming to my home I'm coming to my home The distance I have traveled The wall that I have gathered on I'm coming to my home I'm coming to my home Heaven's shape Sails low, other wild turquoise. Good morning. In this video, we're gonna make a pair of mittens, self-drafted mittens, because that's what I fancy right now. If I create some sort of pattern. That would be for my hand size. Um, my hands are fairly small. I don't know how to compare them for you to understand. <laughs> my cup. <laughs> but my hands are fairly small, so I'll make a pattern for my hands. And then if you want, you can elaborate it or adjust it for your liking or for your hands. I really need a pair of fingerless mittens. Mine are breaking apart and uh, it's nice to have two, you know, if you forget the ones you have in the car or at home, uh, it's nice to have a pair in your purse or pouch, whatever. I'm going to use um, these circular needles, really tiny circular needles. I think this is 25 centimeters uh, circulars. And I'm going to use needle size 3.5. I'm going to hold a sock yarn double. I wanted a pair of mittens that was colorful. One color, multiple color, doesn't matter. But I had this yarn in my stash. It's a sock yarn. I don't remember. Maybe it's Drops Fable. I had it in my stash. Two skeins. This is falling apart. So... That's the plan. Sock yarn held double. Um, so a fingering yarn held double. 3.5 millimeter needles. That's the plan for today. I use fingerless mittens a lot more than normal mittens. I have one pair of normal mittens and I love fingerless mittens. I can work in the garden, I can forage, I can knit. When I walk outside, um, they're super handy. So we're gonna make the second one together and uh, hope for the best. But this fits really well and I've done a lot of increasing and decreasing um, to kind of have the shape I liked. Um, and I'm very happy with how this turned out. So. We're gonna do the second together. Let's do it. So in this little agenda, <laughs> I wrote down the pattern. Okay, so we cast on 44 stitches holding the yarn double. And we are gonna knit a two by two ribbing. So knit two, purl two for an amount of rows. Now, I didn't really count them. <laughs> Let me count them quickly. 15 rows of this two by two ribbing. I'm going to knit and edit a video while I knit the ribbing. And then uh, we'll catch up for the next
Hello. Okay, I am back home. We went on a walk. I went to the little town and I finished the ribbing. And now it's time to knit. Oh, let me finish the row. It's time to knit the vicle braid or lateral braid. Call it as you like. It's basically this yes, side horizontal braid. <laughs> And I'm going to try to explain how I knit it, but there are amazing tutorials online. You can just um, Google. Okay, <laughs> let me show you how I knit the vehicle braid or the lateral braid. So I slip the first stitch uh, purl wise from the left needle to the right needle. And then I go be, uh, behind <laughs> the the second um, stitch on the left needle and knit it through the back loop like this and I keep that stitch together with the first one on the left needle and then I'm going to knit the first one voila and slip everything so that's the starting then the last this last stitch that we have on the right needle, I'm going to slip it back to the left needle and I'm going to repeat that process of knitting the second stitch through the back loop. Oop. I can't really see well because I have my camera in front. Okay, and then I'm going to knit the first stitch on the left needle and slip everything and that's the braid kind of forming. We slip back the first stitch on the right needle to the left needle. We knit the second stitch through the back loop. Voila. So here we see the vehicle braid forming. And we continue this process to the end of the round. It's gonna take a while, but we fortunately we don't have as many stitches as the body of a sweater, <laughs> so it will take less time. But uh, this is how you knit a lateral braid, at least how I knit it. <laughs> Maybe there are other methods that are easier or harder, but I'm okay with this one. And that's it. So we knit the lateral braid and then we knit a full row. The lighting is so bad, but I wanted to tell you what to do next after we've been knitting the lateral braid. We're going to knit one row simple and then in the next row we decrease one stitch we knit another row and then the next row to that one we decrease another stitch so in three rows we decreased two stitches for a total of uh, we will have a total of 36 stitches instead of 38 that we have now and then we're gonna just knit stocking it in the round until we're gonna do a little thumb hole here so stocking it in the round and then we're gonna do this situation here so we'll catch up then need stocking it in the round Oh, 
snowed and today is such a beautiful sunny day it's just a magical magical feeling and I finished the little fingerless gloves I'm very happy with them the only thing with um, with the the right hand thumb I think I cast it off too tight so I will have to unravel this and just the cast off and then uh, cast it off loosely and uh, the, for the rest I think I'm very very pleased with them and uh, yeah let me know if you will make them they're so easy to make that you can always adjust the, the size by casting on um, more stitches if you have bigger hands or you're wanting to knit it for like people that have bigger hands things like that so yeah i'm uh, i'm very very happy uh, with the result of course they're not fancy mittens by any means but they're functional they work it's getting very windy here so i'm going to join the puppy for a walk and thank you so much for joining me today and you know watching this or knitting along with me it means a lot and uh, see you next time <laughs>